Well, I hope you've been enjoying the Flathead Tactics series. Today we've got something a little bit different. Today we're going to be talking about flathead challenges. Now I know some of you guys have fished some of the reel in flathead challenges and perhaps even some of the uh, challenges up further up the coast. And I'm sure you'll agree, it's a great weekend. Get away up there with your mates. Um, you meet new people, we can meet uh, We meet friends. We've made, a lot of new friends have been made and um, there's been a great community established from these flathead challenges. But something else, that's really good about going to them is that some of the anglers that are there, there's some really good flathead fishermen in amongst those that attend these flathead challenges. And the best part of all is they're only too happy to share some of their knowledge with you and me. Now Troy and myself have been fishing for, for flathead for probably over 25 years now, but we're still learning so much and some of these guys have taught us so much. So what we've got for you today is one of the teams that has gone now back to back in the Malakuta Flathead Challenge, the Smash Crabs. So there's four of them in the team, but three of the guys right now, Dan Brady, Mitch King, and Alex Burford, they're all gun anglers, they're all gun brim anglers as well in their own rights. They're gonna now take us through some of the techniques and things that have worked for them during the Flathead Challenges. They've had a lot of success, they're gonna be looking at lures, tactics, and so on. So sit back and enjoy the boys. We're on. Good afternoon, evening, morning. Um, Smash Crabs HQ here. We've uh, been asked for a little video, just going through the basics of what we've been doing the last couple of years. We've had um, some hair we've managed to do all right. Um, thanks for putting up with us, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> so, look, we're not doing anything too far different to probably most of you's. Um, and we'll just run through like really basics of what sort of lures we're throwing, um, you know, areas we're fishing, why we're fishing those areas, that sort of stuff. So we'll start with just the basics of lures and, and what we're throwing, using to throw them and that sort of stuff. So we, we'll run a range of anything from, from like big, big sort of plastic things. We'll go, he, he's going to, yeah, not that big, but take that around, show him that, that's a sluggo. This thing's like being used heavily in the Gold Coast Flooded Classic every single year with great success and that's why we started throwing it. Yeah, have a look at this. Yeah, zoom out a bit mate, come back. <laughs> come back this way. Come back this way, that's it. There we go. That's a sluggo, yep. Um, and, and likewise, like there's some 150ml squidgy uh, fluke baits, there's a lot of, Steve Starling does a lot of great stuff on how to rig these, how to work these, all that sort of stuff. Um, he did a lot in Malakuta on these, so they're another great start in for your bigger baits. Uh, we virtually start at the top in terms of bait size and work our way down. And um, sometimes it's you'll find sizes working better than others. And the bigger ones do definitely attract the better fish. We've had some great success with big lures. And they, if you convince one of your team members have the patience to throw one all weekend, you'll definitely get rewarded for it. So that's definitely something to look at. Um, our yeah, average is probably that size, what Furphy's been throwing the last couple of years. Oh, I haven't changed in four years, boys. <coughs> What's that, Burf? Black and gold fish, squidgy fish. He's, he's about a, definitely... About a one-eighth jig head on that, fish and chat. He's not a man of change. Gets him out and out a lot. It, it does, it does, and he's proven it. He probably outfishes all of us, to be honest. I don't know how. Don't ask us how. I threw a lot this year. These are the new Munros that uh, Troy's has been alright and given us some. Uh, I caught me a big fish on it on day two. But um, it's just a good size. Um, it's in the fool's gold colour. Um, I caught mine weedless. I don't know if you can burp it. You want to do another yeah, demonstration? Do that. That's, yeah. uh, it was really funny because Troy threw us a pack of them on Sunday morning and said, get a fish on these. And Dan's just like, I'm going to get a fish on these. And sure Look enough, that threw it through the thing for a few hours and we absolutely wet ourselves when we bait that fish with that. 2.8. So they definitely work and they're definitely a nice soft moving plastic, plenty of great motion in it. Um, hard bodies, Mitchy? Hard bodies, yeah, so we don't just throw plastic. I think flathead are um, generally, most people go, oh flathead, you know, you throw plastics and that sort of stuff, but 
we've fished that system so many times, fishing for bream and throwing hard bodies that it, we'd be stupid to not go out and throw hard bodies at them because we've got so many now. If you like pick out the most expensive lure in your tackle box, um, 100% you'll get a flathead because they love trying to bust you off on like really expensive lures. But here's a bit of a mixture that Burp will show you on the video. One is obviously a bent minnow, that, they're no secret, like bent minnows work in shallow water. Um, I've got a Luffy Craft Chino in there that we dredge in deeper water. And there's also a, that jointed thing he's going to show you is a Tiemco, it's like a, it's like a glide baity swim bait sort of thing. There's, swim bait's really taken off a of flathead and yeah. it's kind of a smaller, closer to our plastic size, like a four inch, that's the bent minnow. Um, Chinu shad. That's the chino. They they go, you know, a good couple of meters deep. That's for when you sort of work in a drop off or something like that. We use that. And then you've got this other one that we've really only just started throwing this year. Goes all right though. Goes great. It's um called a lonesome drifter. It's about four inches long. It's um it's jointed. It just when you work it really slowly, you can see it in the shallows, just looking like a dying bait fish. Just yeah, by giving it a few twitches, it's um <clears throat> definitely something you want to look at. Crank a crab too, guys, in the big size. I've uh, been experimenting yeah, with Yeah, don't waste some of the small one. You just get brim. It's it's a tough fish. You're fishing super slow, but, um, Burpee, you want to do another demo, mate? Uh, you're fishing super slow, but flatties love crabs. And yeah. we're the smash crabs. And movement. And movement. Don't forget to move it. Because if you like snakes, flathead don't like throw one of these. If you're just dredging that across the bottom in a few movements, it'll get some attention. Um... Don't throw much in the way of vibes. We've mucked around with it over the years, but the one thing I did throw this year, we fished out in the deep in the bottom lake this year, and a Samaki vibe. Um, I spoke to a bloke leading up to the comp, Mark Williams. Um, he did. He spends a lot of time chasing up there in uh, St George's Basin and that sort of stuff. And I know a lot of guys that use them and fish them, and I hadn't used them at Malakuta or anything before, but they certainly work. And we got fish on them. We filled our bag. With, with them as well, so another good one if you target the deeper water. That's what we use anyway. I think the old tool squidgies do. We do throw these a lot, don't we? Um, Heaps. Take hard that. to get your hands on. Uh, yeah, show, show that, Burpee. You, you'll struggle to get your hands on those colours, but um, they were all um, very much designed, made for, and tested at Malakuta back in the day, so I think. We knew they'd work, it's just a case of throwing them until you form with a fish up. <laughs> They're um, any 100, 120 mil wriggler, fish, um, flick bait, they all work. Uh, we're, not, we're not too keyed in on any particular lure. Just I think as long as it's in the water and it's more so making that call on what colour it's working on any given day, and we do change regularly. Um, <clears throat> rods and reels, I suppose, next. Yeah. Um, Mitchie and I are a sucker for a Miller rod. An absolute sucker. I introduced Mitchie to Miller rods, I don't know, five, six years ago, and he probably hates me for it because I probably could have bought another house with what I've spent on Miller rods, but you know what? It's like anything, you get. Turn that one round, but You get what you pay for, and these things in terms of feel with lures and. Well, she's upside down. And power that you get ahead of them. Well, she's just going to drive it in the wall and break it. <laughs> that's that's our favourite, that bad boy. Yeah, that's... Um, Finesse break. I think, he, I think he's designed in for bass, but they're just the most perfect flathead rod getting around. They've got plenty of tip. Plenty of tip in them to work those plastics or hard bodies, whatever you want to throw at it. And plenty of grunt when you actually hook a big one. Um, and that's probably the most important thing. We're fishing a lot of lighter stuff and not... <laughs> we get a big fish and it'd just be like, you know, a, a David and Goliath battle. It just wasn't working. But uh, especially in a in a boat with four people and four rods and reels out, like it's, you've got to sort of chase it, we found. And having that bigger rods and a bit more grunts definitely help. Line, Lines. Um, again, probably no different to most. I've, Massive, massive ambassador for Sunline. Um, they uh, no, not line. They give me stuff, so I'm going to plug it anyway. But it's brilliant stuff. Uh, Castaway Siglon. I use all their leaders as well. Um, we we're fishing a massive mixture of leader. Uh, twenty pound, twenty five pound. We, we have a heavy. bit of a we have a bit of debate every year about where we start on leader and where we end up. 
Um, same years, it's been super finesse. So like we'll be throwing six to eight pound and we lose good fish, so we all crack it. And like this year, I think we threw really heavy. We're all throwing around that 20 pound mark. <coughs> and um, it's certainly helped fast enough, but it can affect how your lure works. So it all just comes into your judgment, guys. Like look at your, what lure you're working, how it works. If you're throwing it with something that's too heavy, well, it's, it's not going to work properly. Thank you. And this is like, these these two idiots next to me actually... We keep, keep him sane. That's, that's as, what we do. As, <laughs> yeah, as stupid as they do seem. They keep these really dull moments on the boat pretty bright. When you go through that phase of not having a fish for a good hour or so, um, they definitely get you through it. When, when someone's actually fishing, that is. And not <laughs> throwing up over the side. <laughs> Someone had to represent the team at the pub? Yeah. But now, what are areas and stuff, Mitchie? Like, obviously, we spend a fair bit of time in a certain area, don't we? We don't really leave it. Yeah, we don't leave it. And I think when you when you when you know there's good fish in a particular area, if you've got fish, if you caught fish, like don't don't leave there until you crack a decent fish. We we're big ones for that. We get a few small ones, and that kind of excites us because there's a whole theory out there that you've got, you know, your smaller males hang around a big female, you pull a few small ones, well, don't run off saying there's no big fish here, there's going to be a bigger fish amongst them if you're prepared to sit there, wait it out, throw enough lures at it, eventually you're going to clunk it on the head. And I think that's more, like, more to the point of how you get the bigger fish. Like, it's sometimes not necessarily what lure you're throwing or what, what you're using to throw it, it's, it's just clunking it on the head and we've definitely done that plenty of times. So, if you find fish, Work the area. Um, bottom lake, top lake, it hasn't, like, I think last year we won it in the top lake. This year we've definitely spent a lot more time in the bottom lake. And it, there's no point going into our oh, spots where you fish versus spots everyone else is fishing because we, we're finding new spots every year. And it's more just once we do find fish, we're just grinding it out until we find it. Like, we actually get those bigger fish. So don't be scared to sit on the spot and really work it. If, you, if you've seen those dust clouds when they've scooted off in shallows or if you're sounding good bait fish in, in the deep, hang around it. There'll be big fish. It's just a matter of time before you clunk them. Um, Probably uh, just a big thanks to the boys that reel it in and everyone, all the sponsors that contribute. And I mean, without everyone that puts in, you know, it wouldn't be the comp that it is. And I think we get 350 people, so everyone makes it. Yeah, it's just a cracking event, isn't it? Awesome weekend. Really. Awesome it's, weekend. And... We love that we can go there and we don't have to be serious. We can have a laugh, we can have fitties, we can carry on like absolute idiots and, and have a blast. And we never even expected to win this once, let alone twice. So, it's a dream <laughs> come true. <laughs> three people. It's coming three people. He's confident. Yeah, right. We're Watch confident. Out. No. I yeah. might actually fish that day, so you blokes should be worried. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't think we've ever had a full team on the boat on any one day, so when that happens, like, fear is, <laughs> it'll be on. But that, I hope that's helped some people, or, I don't know, give you some bit of advice or tips or point you in the right direction. I mean, I, I don't think there'd be too many people that are doing anything different, really. Um, no. I suppose in saying that, you know, like we don't stop for lunch on the boat or anything. We're, you know, oh, we're pretty serious, and we fish pretty hard, even though we muck around and take the absolute piss, but... Um, yeah, when no, we're, we're fishing, fishing. there's lines always in the water. If someone's line isn't in the water, they're getting heckled, and they're getting heckled hard. Like, uh, I've heard things that we call Danny that I've never even heard <laughs> mentioned before on that Saturday when he was a little bit under the weather. And, <laughs> and it was deserved. <laughs> it was well deserved, but it was, you know what? It did really spur us on to fish a little bit harder because we were one man down. And I was actually stressed for once. Oh, he was stressed. Yeah, he was definitely stressed, and he's, there was... Um, I knew we had it in the bag, so I don't know. Fuck, we haven't even got a fish. <laughs> yeah, well, that's probably it, eh? I don't know. Birth, anything else? None for, nothing from me, boys. <laughs> he just looks quite a cheap over here. He yeah, he's all the flatty fish king every year. Blue. Black and gold squidgy fish. After whinging his absolute tits off, just to not catch anything, and always made it just a big one. That is lure, mate. Trophies, Even two of them. Even the slip rig, bang, black and gold. And apparently we're going to fish tyres this year, so watch out. And the Munro. Of course, the Munro. Go to the Munro. Yeah, happy with the Munro. Great addition. Great addition.
Well, thanks so much to the guys for giving us that information. Uh, great help, and they've had a lot of success. If you notice there, and we've noticed with a lot of the teams that do really well, they don't move around a lot. When they find a place, an area that has it's holding a few small fish, they stay there, they grind it out, and they just they they end up getting their fish. And they normally find that big fish that's sitting in that bay on that drop off. So something we can all learn from. Be adaptable, change your lures. Um, perhaps get one of your team members on a, on a big big bait, or one on a small lure, one on a hard body. Um, even try some weedless fishing. And work as a team. So it's really important and what we've noticed with a lot of these good teams is they always try to have as many rods in the water as they can. So if someone catches a fish, have someone assigned to do the photography, take the photos on the brave mat so the others can keep fishing. All those points are uh, all going to help us in our flathead challenges. One of the things we've noticed as reel it in from these flathead challenges as we're looking from a distance is it, we can't understate how important this is, is just try and get as many people on your boat as possible. We've fished Naruma Flathead Challenge ourselves a few times and we've only had three people. That fourth person, that extra person on the back of the boat would have got us that one more fish we needed one year to take out the challenge. So if, you could, if you're fishing with two, can you fit a third person on? Or with three, can you fit that fourth person on? Many rods in the water as you can and you're gonna have a lot of success. So thanks again to the boys. We hope you enjoyed this episode and then we'll see you at the next Flathead Challenge.